Hi, I'm Tracy with RX Performance. We've got a uh, 2015 new Stingray in here, a Z51 uh, uh, LT2 option. A uh, couple changes from the 2014 uh, with the LT1 engine. Uh, number one, the uh, dry sum setup and the intake duct work has been changed a little bit. They've altered the location of the passenger side clean side line. Probably uh, uh, working to reduce the oil uh, ingestion from the dry sump versions. But we're going to take this all apart and we're going to see. Now first I've taken off these uh, coil covers. I'm going to let the engine cool a little bit. I'm going to uh, remove driver side clean side line, which is uh, very simply pressing the release tabs on each side will pop right off. We're going to retain these if it needs to go back to stock sometime. The RX system does come now with uh, OEM style uh, fittings for this. And okay, and I've got one size too small, so we'll come back to that. We're going to first take the cold air dam out. This is a seven millimeter. Make sure the screws go where you're not going to lose them. We've got four total. Two on the top and two on each side. out of the way and you can see how we're bringing the cold air down through bring it in and through the radiator this is a nice setup and next thing we're going to do is release the passenger side we're going to Air bridge off with a simple screw clamp, flat bladed screwdriver. <laughs> and we're going to inspect just to see what we have for oil ingestion. Now, this engine, to make note, was broken in with some pretty spirited driving. So this is going to have less of a problem with blow-by in oil ingestion as the others would. And in fact, got almost no oil in here, which is a great sign. Got a little bit right there. As you can see in the bellows, they're as dry as can be. This is another example seat the rings, break this uh, engine in properly in that first couple hundred miles and you're going to have much less issue with uh, oil ingestion than you will driving it and following the owner's manual. Okay, the other thing we're going to look at is the throttle body and this again very minor very little, almost no signs of oil ingestion. Just the smallest amount until we get into the clean side. Then we're getting saturated. So I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to pull the uh, 
throttle body off and show that what GM has done for 2015 here with the redesign of the uh, dry sump oil tank and their clean side uh, routing seems to have done a good job in reducing the amount of uh, ingestion here. So We've got one connector with a release, unplug the throttle body, we have four 10 millimeter head bolts that hold it on. Again, we're going to show, and let me get a white uh, paper towel here. And we only have a minor film of oil on the throttle body itself, and that's on the back side of the blade. And we've got some minor carbon and soot buildup as well in the bore. We're going to clean all that off. But what we're seeing is the dirty side inlet, which is the vacuum bar protruding out the driver's side of the intake manifold snout is where most of the oil ingestion is going to come in on both the non-Z51 and the new dry sumps with GM's redesign. So we're just going to reach inside this intake manifold and see what we can access and try to wipe out some of this oil. And as we come out, we've got it saturated. So there's what, Corey, 1,100 miles on this? 1,200 miles on this car. It was broken properly, which you can see by the lack of the oil upstream. But we've got quite a saturation in the intake manifold. Now, at 1,100 miles, there's probably not a lot of intake valve coking that has begun. So we should not have to do intake valve cleaning. But the only way to really clean this intake manifold would be to remove it, clean it with brake clean or another grease cutting solvent, and then go from there. But I'm going to try to get in and sop up some more where I can toward the front. And this is the oil ingestion with a direct injection engine. We need to stop. prevent intake valve coking down the road. So we're getting quite a bit more and there's not much more we're going to be able to do there. So we're going to move ahead here and begin the installation of the can. First thing I'm going to do is put the throttle body back on. Spray with some brake clean, take a clean rig, loosen up the deposits that are already there, and clean those off. Now these again are very minor, but as that builds up, it creates a stumble and a hesitation off idle that gradually will become worse. And you don't want that, you want a nice smooth transition off idle into uh, open throttle. And there we've got a pretty good job. All the oil is off the blade. And I'm gonna reinstall the throttle body. We're going to 
start all these bolts by hand and then we're going to draw them up evenly. The gasket is a reusable o-ring that stays in the intake manifold so no worries there. Tracy, do we sell the uh, replacement throttle body setup for this car? Uh, we have it in the works right now. We should have it released hopefully in the next 30 to 45 days, which will uh, greatly improve off idle throttle response as well as uh, some good horsepower gains. Right, we're gonna just evenly crisscrossing, snug these bolts before we give them a final snug. And do not over tighten. Make sure to plug in the harness again and we're going to start with removing the little u-shaped tube that's coming from the valley vent which is the foul or the dirty side again this is going to release simply by pushing and set this aside as well. We're going to take our packet, pull out the bracket. The bracket is going to the driver's side cylinder head. We're going to have an assortment here of fittings. Not all of them are going to be used. I guess they do fit. air bridge back in place just so we know for fitment of the can and clearance. going to replace the oil fill cap on the dry sump. Now if this was a wet sump, this would replace the oil fill cap would be on the driver's side valve cover. So we simply take the bottom section off, install it, takes a half turn cam lock to see and you simply to add oil pull this off it seals with the two o-rings and this is going to be our clean side so we're going to this line here and we're going to cut back 
a bit of the insulation. We're going to cut this line. We're going to put a short piece of 3 8 inch hose so that we're following and have a nice stock look here. go right here where you can see the barb has been pressed on simply cut that if it needs to go back to stock this can be pushed back over and it will still fit at a later date. We're going to save that fitting with the rest of the stock ones. We're going to measure we need maybe three and a half inches slide from the barb on the clean side to this clean side line which is going to bring in the majority of our mass airflow metered air it's filtered from the main filter comes in through here and vents clean air going into the engine on both valve covers and coming out the valley cover. So now clean side's been installed, low profile cap fits, simple pull it up if you need to add oil, push it back into place, it seals, and we're done with this side with the exception of this is now going to run over to this line here so we don't have a direct line into the intake tube. So we're going to take the line here, push it over the front barb, and note this is slightly different than what we were doing with the 2014. We're going to route this line. It's going to go down underneath the cold air cover. side barb. We're going to come up here and measure. This completes our clean side and we're going to cap this barb on the air bridge which is not used. We include a vacuum cap here simply slide that vacuum cap over this barb so we get no unfiltered air in. And now we've got our clean side filter separator trapping any of the oil. We're bringing in fresh air to both banks. And now we go on to the catch can. Alright. We'll go in yeah. So, not on uh, anything worse. Okay, 13 millimeter. Get a 
take a 13 millimeter socket and we're going to remove the existing bolt in the top of the cylinder head on the driver's side here. You're going to have to just push aside the harness. Starting with the cool car that sat for a couple hours is ideal, but for this instance, now we're going to take the bolt we removed, it's going to go into the bracket, the bracket is going to mount this way so the bend is out. We're going back into that top hole. Move the harness bracket so that this fits in between. And we're simply going to snug this up so it's straight up and down. And we're going to move on to putting the can itself. Um, we probably are going to want to do a drain hose on this. Although, no, I think this one's going to work easier with the 2015 just to be able to put a glass or a bottle right underneath it and then drain right into it. Yeah. We can do a drain hole that comes out the bottom, <laughs> as you can see. And we'll screw the nipple that was included in. And tight here to drain, we're simply opening the quarter turn ball valve and closing when we're done. Drain it with the engine off and at operating temperature. Now we're going to take the mount bolts, our two quarter twenty by one half. We're going to go into the threaded bolt holes here. Again, we're going to bring this in. The lower portion is going to go into the center hole and the upper slot is going into the top hole. Now with the finish baked on that top hole is going to be a little harder to start. Just be patient, get it started straight. That's going to take 7 sixteenths inch wrench. And we're simply going to Tighten these two up. Okay, just snug, don't over tighten. We don't want to break them off. The lock washer is going to keep it in place and secure. As you can see the can is tucked up in here nicely and it's going to be mainly hidden and looks pretty near stock. Okay, now our next step is the center of the can is going to go to the lower barb. That's the black plastic barb coming out of the valley cover itself. If I can get some light here, as you can see it has a built-in check valve and this is where the foul vapors, the dirty side is going to evacuate. You're pulling out those oil laden PCV vapors from the crankcase into the can. So we're going to measure and cut a short piece of line from the center of the can to there and that's going to be approximately six inches. So, 
we'll take and first slide this line on the bottom the valley barb measure so we're not too short we're going to cut this off and this is going to slide on to the center barb of the can Get it firmly on there. There's no clamps needed. This will be under vacuum, not under pressure. All right. Now we're going to move to the first outlet. Again, we're going to cut a very small piece. I'm going to go off of this valve right here. That's the vacuum barb that's coming from Can you shine a light down here? Yeah, sure and right as you can see it's go. coming right off the driver's side of the intake manifold snow, right behind where the throttle body <laughs> bolts on. That's where we're going to be doing this. So again, we're going to cut this just long enough to slide on that barb. And we're going to slide that firmly on. Then we're going to screw this to the outer fitting here. And make sure you don't cross thread, you get it started straight. And you're going to just snug this, not too tight. Being AN fitting, this is going to seal without having to crank it down. Just snug it. Okay. All right. Now we've got this. Make sure there's no lines kinked. And that's our primary evacuation point. We use an intake manifold to evacuate any time that you're not wide open throttle. The secondary outlet is going to correct where the engine crankcase can build up pressure. And this is going to go from here directly into the boot upstream of the throttle body and we're going to take a spot right here just above this and let me get the flashlight here just above this rib and we're going to drill right into there we're going to put a little uh, grease or Vaseline on the drill bit to collect any of the debris uh, any minor debris that would get in is not going to be an issue it's soft rubber so again we're going to double check that this is going to be long enough and I can see this hose is just a little too short so we're going to replace this Tracy, this installation is, a, there's a diagram for this, right? Is this the one that we made, the LS yeah. diagram? It'll be, uh, no, the uh, uh, diagram we're going to do new. 
just for the 2015. Okay, so since we'll, they changed from the 2014 a few things, and we'll be releasing that shortly. And that'll be on our website, rxperformance.com. change the length. Make sure that the arrow on the check valve is pointing away from the can because this is going to evacuate. Anytime that you're going wide open throttle this is going to provide our evacuation. So we've got that the right length. We're going to use a 3 8 inch drill bit. coated with some grease to catch any of the debris I'm going right above that rib and we're gonna wipe the grease which will have any of the shavings with it off we're gonna take our secondary outlet we're going to screw this on first, make sure it's started, we're going to firmly push that in to the hole we just made, I'm going to take our combination wrench, adjustable wrench, and just snug that up, and everything is good, and we've completed the rest of the installation. Now we're going to go back over all of our connections and fittings. We're going to start the car and check for any vacuum leaks. And Corey, you want to start her up here and we'll give her a shot. engine lights. We can tell by the way it's idling. We don't have vacuum leaks, but we're still going to want to check all of our connections to make sure everything's secure and none of the lines are clamped. And if we look back here, what we did was replace front connection for front side with the RX clean side. We now have moved so this front connection is supplying clean air to the driver's side. The RX tool valve can is going to route through and trap any of the oil and other compounds from ingestion. So, we clean this up, we're going to take, make sure that our covers fit properly here, and go back into place, snug and snap it down. Thank you. 
sure the tabs are in here. Now we're going to put our put cooling duct back into place. We're going to take the four screws for it. tight, don't need to strip anything, just snug it down until it seats. side separator replaces the oil fill cap. See if everything's working properly we can pull this off. You can place your hand over the opening. You'll be able to feel a little bit of suction that's pulling in the fresh air. Fresh air is coming in again. Filtered meter by the map into the dry sum paint, feeding both paints, file vapors out into the can, and we're complete.